What up, OGs? Welcome back to another episode of the OG Sessions podcast. I'm your host, Nick Usher. Let's get it started. Usher, Usher. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. What up, OGs? Welcome back to another episode of the OG Sessions podcast, man. I'm super hyped about this episode. This is episode number 53, season two, going down right now at the OG HQ. Before we get started, man, make sure you are following us on all social media so you don't miss those updates whenever we drop new episodes, you know, bonus content, shit like that, man. So Instagram, that's going to be OG Sessions pod. Same on Twitter, OG Sessions Pod, TikTok, OG Sessions. Obviously, we're on YouTube now. That's going to be just OG Sessions. Um, yeah, man, show love. And if you're not a part of our Patreon yet, that's going to be patreon.com forward slash OG Sessions. You do not want to miss out on that, man. Like, real quickly, our Patreon has been popping. We've got some certified OGs on there, man, and they are for real. You guys are just showing us so much love, so much support on there. The private chat community is going dumb. You guys are so stupid in that bit. I love it. (laughs) And just the ideas you guys give me for the podcast are just, just, you know, irreplaceable, man. And if you're not a part of that community, go over there and join. That's patreon.com forward slash OG Sessions. We've got three membership packages available. So if you broke or you rich, we got you. Um, Show that love for the Patreon, man. But before we get started, let me introduce one of my favorite human beings on this earth. Obviously, you guys know who it is. He is co-hosting for me today. It is that boy, Joey Allen. Yo, yo, what up? Happy to be here. We're going to have some fun today. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Get this mic Get this mic out of your face, man, so we can see see what you got going on. Here Joey go. with the mullet. Yes, sir. And you guys already got a little, little preview of who we got as a guest today, man. This is an episode that we've been trying to get going for a hot, hot Hot, burning, fiery, a million <laughs> suns minute, man. It's that boy, Broadway Louie. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. That's good. He is a rapper, an actor, a mental health advocate, and a man of many facets. And I am super excited to have you here today, man. Appreciate it, man. I'm, it, I told you, like, when I walked in here, the energy is amazing here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to it ever since you guys came across my, my socials. And I was like, oh, now nah, they set up is crazy. And then I, I watched a couple, and I was like, nah, I really like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it looked like it was organic. You know what I mean? And that's important mm-hmm. in, in these spaces. I appreciate that, homie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, you know, we're working real hard over here. And um, obviously, we were excited to collab with you as well because you're doing the same kind of things, man. We see you applying pressure. We see you got the motion. and um, Got to cook, dog. You I, can't get rich sitting still. I'm nope. excited to talk about it, man. How are you feeling? Amazing, dog. Life is beautiful right now. You know what I mean? Working, staying busy. You know what I'm saying? The sun is out. You know, I'm healthy. I'm walking above ground. I can't complain, dog. I love it. How, how's the beginning of your new year been? <laughs> Any big accomplishments? Any big projects? Busy, dog. Like this is um, it's crazy because I've I've been an artist for probably like six or seven years, and you know I put a lot of work in, but it's like now just out, straight up out of this year. I also think it has something to do with me changing my approach to life and just being thankful instead of complaining about what's not there. But like this year has just been fruitful, like mm-hmm. movie after movie, opportunity after opportunity, getting paid, paid. You know what I'm saying? Which you know, and when you run your own business, it's it's hard to get to that point. But you got to put the work in to get there. Yeah. So now it's like this year, it's like, you know, people from the outside finally recognizing, like, my worth because I started recognizing it myself. Not a lot of people yeah. ever see the growth that goes into the project it's or tough, anything man. beforehand. You know, they only see what happens when you blow up or when yeah. you start making a couple of dollars off it. Yeah. Nobody sees those late nights, you know, those hours, those days, weeks, months spent where yes, you're just trying to build up to that point, you the know. Constant and financial losses. like 100%. Yeah. 100%, man. I'm right there with you. And, yeah. um. But hey, it's glad to glad to be at the top, man. It's glad to be you know getting we cooking, some motion going, you know what I'm and just, cooking, cooking exactly, cooking. just getting it going. So let's uh, let's give my audience a brief rundown on who Broadway Louis is. Yeah, yeah. So uh, where'd you grow up? Patterson, New Jersey. Well, let me also add North Carolina in because they get mad at me whenever I say that. Okay. So <laughs> so I grew up. I was raised. In, I was born and raised in Patterson, New Jersey. Um, and then uh, I was like, you know. I was a good kid in a bad city, so I got caught up with different influences and stuff. So I would get A's and B's, but then I get suspended for stupid stuff. So then my mother moved in to North Carolina, um, Bertie County to be exact. And uh well not Bertie County, but Scotland Neck is a town like it's literally no stoplight. Oh like, damn. Yeah, and then I lived in Trap. Um Trap has no stoplight neither. 
and you got to go like 20 minutes just to get to Walmart. So mm-hmm. I, I went from being a city boy to a country boy in like one summer. Out in the sticks. Yeah, it was different. You know what I mean? But, um, it, you know, I learned a lot. You know what I'm saying? What did you do out there for fun? Did you have any hobbies? Yeah, like North Carolina? Yeah. Bro, we was out. We was out. Like, we literally, like, you know, go out in the woods, be going the whole day. Yeah. So we had four-wheelers. We had BB guns. Okay. We had dirt yeah. bikes. Yeah. Played basketball. Um, we wrestled. Like, yeah. you know, it was the time period where you wasn't all in your phone. So you just got outside and you was gone. You mm-hmm. look for stuff to do. We was adventurous, bro. I love <laughs> like, riding dirt bikes and stuff Yeah, like man. You I know, haven't done it in a while, but. Yeah, you know, older I get less dangerous I want to be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. like being safe. So, yeah, but. More um, things to protect now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, uh, North Carolina was a great experience. Uh, it provided me with that that southern that southern love, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's more homelier. Where New Jersey is kind of like fast paced, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of different people going on, but you know I learned a lot from both um, both places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot, man. And, and you seem like one of those guys that's had a real, real dope childhood. You know what I mean? Like growing up in two separate places, you got kind of you get experience a lot more than the average person, where they're just kind of raised in that one place their whole life. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot. I'm cultured, like I like to say, I'm yeah, cultured. You know what I mean? Yeah. I went through a lot of stuff, so it's like. You know, I'm somebody that that I seen a lot, so I try to be thankful for what I what I have. You know what I mean? And one thing I got is knowledge, like or experience from what I've been through and what I've seen. So in New Jersey, it was wild. In North Carolina, it was it was wild, just in a different way. You know yeah. what I mean? But either way, you know, it made me who I am. I like it. I like it. So, um, which one? You said New Jersey came first. So you yeah. were born in New Jersey, and then yeah. you moved to North Carolina. Yeah. When did you end up here? The Navy. The city. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I was graduating from co- uh, high school, and um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I wanted to play basketball, but the schools I was trying to go to wouldn't give me the scholarship that I wanted. So uh, me being big head, it was like, ah, F y'all schools, you know what I'm saying? And it just so happened that the Navy called and was like, yeah, you can play basketball for us. Of course the and, Navy called. Yeah, and then we're going to give you all this money and this and that and third. So they gave me the big fake publishing check, you know what I'm saying, at, on award day. <laughs> and uh, I remember they tricked me because it was like $162,000. And I'm like, ah, hey, I ain't got this, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then I uh, go to boot camp and find out that I was duped, you know what I'm saying? Because I thought Damn. I was going to the academy to play ball. I didn't know I was going enlisted, you know what I mean? So I'm in boot camp, <laughs> and it's crazy because <laughs> they screaming at us, they yelling at us, and I'm like, yo. I was just trying to play basketball. I ain't here for all this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he was like, the dude was like, he looked at me, he's about to go off, but I think he's seen how serious it was in my face because I was about to break down. I'm like, yo, what am I doing here? Like, I'm supposed to be playing basketball. Like, I ain't here for this. He took me in the office. He said, I'm just going to go ahead and be honest with your recruit. Your, your recruit lied to you. Damn. And I'm like, all right, well, I want to go back home. He's like, nah, it's too late. Like, it's, I found out later on that he was lying, but you know, he was so used to it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 17 year old with 16 when I first went in. I turned 17 in boot camp, so I'm in there like, damn, bro, like. So you kind of got stuck. Tricked, I'm stuck. Tricked into the navy. It happens, bro. It happens. But in the same sense, you know. What was your job in there once you got into the Navy? I went through a, a few different ones. So when you first go in, if you don't um, choose a job, you go in as undesignated. So when I got out of boot camp, I got sent to the ship, and um, I was just everything. So I painted the side of the ship. You know what I mean? It was a lot of pain, a lot of chipping, mm-hmm. a lot of dumb work like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, I drove the ship. Um a lot of different things still watch. Drove the ship. They have you going in there undesignated. Now you driving that motherfucker. Well, that's your department. Um, both swim mate, both swim mates, and uh, and yeah, that's that's literally your job. That's um, crazy. That's when you were job. in boot camp, did they make you do like stupid chores, like sweep outside and stuff like that? No, you do that in the navy though. Really? I was in Africa, bro, sweeping dirt on a <laughs> on a on a sweeping dirt on a dirt pier. Like <laughs> it was no concrete, it was dirt. They had a sweeping dirt, bro, in the rain at that. Bro, trust me, bro. Yeah, that's yeah, funny. They, they, they any, any regrets? Uh, I mean, you know, everything you got its pros and cons. You know what I'm saying? But the people I met in the military, the connections I made, you know, a lot of that is why I survived and got, went through the things I went through and grew out of it because mm-hmm. I still got those people around me now. That's good. So, you know, um, it was a lot of losses. But, um, I mean, I'm paid for the rest of my life, too, though. And they paid for my college. You know what I'm saying? They paying for my daughters when they go. So, I love it. You know, it's it's you That's know good. it's a give and take. It's yeah. pros and cons with everything, though. I would say I got more happy on um, memories and stuff from that um, from the military than I got bad. That's good. Yeah. When uh when did you get out? So you did four years in the military, I'm assuming. No, I did eight. 
Damn. Yeah, I, it was crazy because my daughter was being born, like, going into my fifth year, and I was supposed to get out and go play basketball overseas. Mm-hmm. But, like, I ain't want um, – they told me they wouldn't pay for her and my daughter. So I was like, uh, I don't really know what to do. I don't want her to, you know, use it against me and this and that third. So I ended up just reenlisting. So I ended up staying there for a while. But, yeah, uh so Eight at the years. end of the day, you did get some good benefits out of it, and it wasn't Absolutely. ever like, yeah. So I mean, it's always, it's at first you were probably pretty unhappy what with what was going on, For but sure. now you're in a position to, or you're I capitalized a hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. you know what I mean. That's a great way to put it. it. Has it's, to. Like, it's life. Sometimes you can't handle it. Yeah, and it's life, bro. Like honestly, where I'm from, like it's probably saved my life. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't one of the kids. I was always out there wilding and stuff like that. But I was outside wilding. I was outside with people I ain't had no business being outside with. Yeah. So, you know, like where I'm from, like in Jersey and North Carolina, like the 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 crime rates is heavy. So, you know, if you don't keep your eye out or you don't, you know, keep yourself protected, you can end up on a t shirt. And honestly, like 100%. I'm thankful. You know what I mean? Like I God chose my path and I was able to survive and look at me now. You right. know what I'm saying? Was it difficult? Well, see, I never even knew that you had this desire to go play basketball so bad. I mean, you yeah. were, you got out of high school wanting to go play basketball in college and then you got out of the Navy still wanting to go play basketball overseas. Yeah. And well, yeah, yeah. I played basketball for the Navy though. So I played all Navy basketball. I played okay. semi pro. So I ended up did I did get to play, but you know, I, I was another kid with the hoop dreams of going to the NBA and everything. And I played against NBA players. I cooked NBA players. Mm-hmm. I done played against a lot of people. But it's like, you know, that path isn't for everybody. Yeah. Do you, you know think you I mean? could cook me and Joey one-on-one? Yeah, for sure. Hell no. For you sure. ain't going to cook us. For sure. sure. If we could get a little about two versus one? Two versus one? Two versus one? For sure. Hell no. I'm still like That's that. That's all I'm saying. I'm still You're him. Tripping. So whenever I get big enough to be in these celebrity all-star games, like How old NBA, are you? How do you? it doesn't matter. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cook you. I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to think. You were in the military for eight years out you got after you got out of high school. The math not going to add up. You're at least 30. But see, we don't know how long it was until when he got, like, how long ago he got out of the, the military. The mystery continues. He said it was 16 right, when he right. was in. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said it was 16 when he was 32. We're going to say, we're going to go he's ahead and like settle this He's like 34, 35. I know he's probably, no, I'm going with, I'm going with like 32. I bet he's like You know, the 32. funny thing is nobody actually believes I'm even in 30s. So, I give you that. Yeah, no, I mean, well, when we first, when I first met you, I didn't know that. If I'm doing the math, it's got to be in the 30s. When we were doing, you know, we're doing the research, we were learning <laughs> about, <laughs> <laughs> we were doing the the research, you know, uh-huh. about like, you know, for the episode and shit, yeah. and you've had so many things happen, you've done so much shit, I'm like, okay, each of these ventures takes about a year, you yeah, know, to yeah. at least kind of establish, and I'm like, all right, yeah. well, you know, start adding shit up. Looking so. at your resume, you're probably it's, about 60, but like. Hey, you look about hey, thirty. You yeah. know what I'm hey, look, look, God is good all the time. You know, what I mean? love it, love it, man. So um, we're gonna keep acting like I'm 25, though. All my OGs, man, go in the comments right now and let me know. <laughs> Take your guess of how old Broadway Louis is, man. I'm at 32. Listen. Joey's at 34, 35. Yeah. Um, Man, take your guesses. And Whoever one day guesses the right age, you get free tickets to my next movie premiere. Boom. Okay. Boom. Okay. There it is. Y'all better run that shit up right now. <laughs> <Okay>. guess, right <laughs> now. It's man, 30 points. And, and somebody better be in the 40s, man. You got to you gotta be the all ball out. I'm going to tell you, go I'm going to give you an A. You in the 40s, you're going too far. Okay. Okay. Yeah, word, 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 Um. So let's let's get away from this Navy talk, man. Okay. Because obviously that ain't the highlight of everything you got going on. Nah, like so you, you get out of the Navy. Mm-hmm. You kind of still had these hoop dreams. You're like, I kind of still want to do this. When did you even, like, when did you get into acting or, or being an artist? Like, whichever one you want to go into first. Which one started first? Um, They kind of both started at the same time. Okay. Uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I got out because it was kind of sudden. And uh, I know that people were saying, like, you should do music. So, like, I kind of was like, all right, well, I know you got to spend money. So, let me figure out ways I could save money. So, I was like, let me go to Full sale to learn how to uh, produce um, beats for myself and then I was like I'm gonna learn how to um, manage myself but then while I was there like I, I didn't want to leave Jacksonville um, because my daughter was here and I just you know I never wanted to leave her so I stayed here and transferred to the art institute and um, that's where I got into filming because I was like all right I could save money by shooting my own music videos so um, with me being there literally like some of the students that had been there for a while I was like yo you you should be in front of the camera mm-hmm. like they just was like yo you got the energy and it's like Cause they was whispering and shit. I'm like, yo, what y'all whispering about? Like, excuse me, yo, what's going on? Like, and they was like, no, no, we was just saying like, you're you you look like you should be in front of the camera. And at this time, I'm like, literally just starting school. 
I done became a cameraman. I done shot like modeling fashion shows. I done shot comedy shows. Like I done shot music videos, short films for other students. But like I ain't never been in a camera like that. You know what I mean? But I've always been a personality literally my whole yeah. life. I think I was always supposed to be an entertainer. But, you know, in school, when you the class clown, you kind of get it's like an unfair reputation you get. Like in reality, you just want to make people happy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you want to see other people laugh. That's it. I yeah. just I love like making people happy, making people laugh, and bringing that energy out of people. So um, over time, I just like you know it just it just happened where it was like, all right, you know what? Let me try this out. And um, I was on um, I was at I never forget. I was at I was going to BB King's um in New York in Times Square to perform, and it was like my biggest show ever. You know what I'm saying? And I remember Los Two K who did Soul Hood, my first movie. He was doing an audition. I was, like, upset because I couldn't make it. And I called him, like, yo, I'm not going to make it. I got South by Southwest tomorrow. Like, I'm I'm still on the road, like, but I want to audition. He's, like, don't worry about it. You could audition when you get back. So, like, two weeks later, I got back. He brought me by the house, and we did the audition. He's, like, honestly, bro, I already gave you the part. I just want to see it in person. I'm, like, nigga, what? Like, what you mean? Like, oh, that's crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, he really gave me my first shot because that's my first real movie. Other than that, mm-hmm. it was, like, little small, small roles. But, like. He gave me my first shot as a starring role in a movie, like an hour and a half long movie, and I'm majority character. So it was what like movie is it? Soul Hood. Soul That's Hood. the first movie I've done. Um, 2017. That's the first movie I've done. Shout out to Los, um, 2K, Carlos Smith, um, one of the best film directors we've ever had in Jacksonville. Like the list it was filmed on. in Jacksonville. Yeah. Uh, What's yeah. that movie about? Uh, so it's about four guys basically um, from different backgrounds, and you know we're working at this sandwich shop. And we're just tired of struggle. Mm-hmm. We're literally tired of struggle, and we want to figure out a way to make some money and separate ourselves. And so we decided to start a film company. With us starting a film company, it's a lot of different things that go behind behind the scenes. Where you got this guy who who he who fronts us the money, but it's some shaky stuff going on, mm-hmm. and he's pulling some criminal stuff going on. So then we get caught up in that, and then it's like you know somebody's going through something with their girlfriend. So it's like all these different scenarios, like a yeah. day in a life, but yeah. it, it continues on. So yeah, that's what Soho is about, but it's grown, bro. Like we're literally, or oh, I ain't wear my shirt today, but we're on Soho Saga, which is the fourth, the fourth installment. Yeah. We kind of like build our own little multiverse from it. Yeah. And, um, are they all like an hour and a half? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And they on Amazon, um, Amazon prime right now. Uh, the older Amazon ones, prime. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, I got some DVDs, but the yeah, I want to watch get... this, man. This seems like a pretty yeah. dope, dope to, film. To, to see it, like to see the growth from the beginning of the movie, because some people were were extras, ended up being starring characters. Like right. that's yeah. how, how much it's grown, and and honestly, like it's it's. I mean, respectfully to all the other movies, it's the biggest independent movie out of Jacksonville ever. Because mm-hmm. wow. we've sold out Regency three or four times every time we've done it, multiple theaters. We done filmed in Virginia, Miami, California. We done filmed everywhere with it, but it's a Jacksonville-based film. Right. You know what I'm saying? And Jacksonville used to be Hollywood. So I got some questions about this, man. So this is pretty dope. Um, yeah. What is it like behind the scenes making these movies? Oh, is my it, God, bro. Like, the production that goes into it, I'm sure, has got to be so extensive. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, on Amazon. Yeah. I mean, we also, you know, after doing it for a while, it becomes smoother, a smoother process, and you know how things go. But the first time, man, there was so much stuff going on behind the scenes. And, like, the, my biggest issue is, like, people themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, you work with some people who, you know, they aren't good people necessarily. Their ego. Ego gets in the way a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. like the whole first movie, we had stuff going on behind the scenes that was kind of just, like, festering to the point where it happened in the second movie. And right. if you notice, it's people that's not in the second movie that were main characters in the first movie. You know Got what you, I mean? Because, yeah. it's like, it was stuff going on and, and people just they got wasn't, booted? You know yeah. what I mean? You get the boot, you, you can't handle it. You get you know the boot, what I mean? man. Like, you're messing up chemistry. You got to think, right, like, yeah. if it's, it's got to be chemistry. It's a, in it's a set. set, and you got 20, 30 people on set, but you, every single person feels a type of way about mm-hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? And much respect to the people that, you know, were removed from the film and the, and the franchise, but, you know, it worked out for the best. You know what I mean? Right. And it's just like that, bro. But the, the thing I, I love most about it was the was learning about myself and, like, the range I got or, like, what I can actually be because he gave me my first shot. You know what I mean? Acting was just a, a thought until then. You yeah. know what I mean? But I really saw that I can handle myself for a full movie and then go to the theaters and see people actually, like, in tune and excited with what I was doing. That's, mm-hmm. like, it's an unforgettable feeling. That's nice. Yeah. 
That's dope, man. And can you explain to me real quick? I know we're kind of backtracking a little bit, but what is what is Full Sail University? Because I've seen the ads online a lot. Is it an actual campus or is it a no? Full Sail is arguably the biggest school for film production, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's up there with Disney too. And they're connected with a lot of, like, they're connected with everything. A lot of the big businesses and stuff, people that work there probably graduated from Full Sail, Mm -hmm. just to be honest. Like, if you ever heard of Juilliard? Yeah. So, like, that's what the film school entertainment side, that's what the comparison I would think it is. Wow, okay. To the point where, like, my my military money wasn't even enough to pay for it. I still had to go get student loans. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's dope, you know what I mean? But it's like... Uh, I was doing a hybrid degree, so, like, my first six months was going to be online because, like I said, I was trying to figure out if I wanted to move to Orlando. Makes mm-hmm. sense. But, you know, um, it's very beneficial, but, you know, some pe- I know some people that graduated, and they was like, that shit didn't do nothing for me, but I know some people that graduated, and they, they working on Marvel movies. Or it's movies. interesting because, you know, with, with movies and with music and with things like that, sometimes you kind of get the impression that a degree isn't that important because it's such an independent-based, right. like, thing. Right. Like, you kind of – it's all about – Creativity and, and a lot of that usually doesn't come from a degree, but it, it also, I'm sure, is really beneficial to go in there and get that degree and have that just kind of as back. I think it's more so the know. people that you meet. I think the networking in the 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 communities you place yourself in going to full sale is probably more beneficial than the actual degree. Do you wow. think the degree is necessary? Mm, from people like me, nah. Yeah. Um, but I learned what I needed to learn. Yeah. You know what I'm what saying? What was your biggest takeaway from going to Full Sail? What was one of the things where you're just like, wow, this is, I, I really did learn something from here. That's when I learned it's not about the, the art, it's about the business. Mm. That's that's how, that's what I learned. Like, it's so much stuff that goes on where artists are always thinking about, like, you know, and I can't blame them. An artist just wants to be an artist. Right. But when you become a brand, it's different because now you got to worry about how I make my money back. How I'm gonna present myself. That's the things that went through my brain. Like I wanted the full scope. That's why I wanted to learn how to be a manager. Cause you know, the the horror stories that you always hear with record labels is you didn't read the contract or mm-hmm. you got a bad manager and stuff of that nature. So I was like, I might as well know all this stuff ahead of time because I don't want nobody to try to get over on me. And I'm not sacrificing my pride for no dollar sign. Mm-hmm. So it's like I learned what I needed to learn. I took the benefits. Look, I got a free MacBook, I got a free interface, I got free recording equipment. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm the type of person where no matter what happens, I take the best out of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I learned what I needed to learn from Full Sail, realized it was way too much going on and like it wasn't for me Um, and went to the Art Institute and learned what I needed to learn from there. They were scamming though, so they ended up closing, they, closing them down real quick. Um, scamming? What you mean? The Art Institute, you can Google it, man. Google Art Institute, you know what I'm saying? And scam, and you'll see it. They was, they was scamming, especially veterans. They was getting out. They was uh, taking advantage of the fact that we was veterans. You know, we weren't familiar with the process. Mm-hmm. So they was getting a lot of our money and not putting the money in the right places. Damn. Yeah. Wow. That's always sad to hear, especially somewhere out of Jacksonville, too. It's like, come on, man. It's yeah. like, we're already, everyone in the city's on the come up, man. You got to do some slimy shit like that. I should have known it was a scam, though, when I got there. Did you get a like, actual degree from there? Like, nah, actually, my, my degree is in communications. Okay, word. Yeah, okay. through Phoenix. Yeah. I mean, Because I'm not an in-school person. I can't sit still for that me long. Either, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, I let me go ahead and log in on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, do all my work for the whole week, and then I'll get see y'all next yeah. week. So, wait, I'm sorry. You So, then you went to school again at University of Phoenix? Yeah. And you said you're not 40. Nah. Oh, my God, bro. No, I'm at <laughs> like, hold crazy. on. Hold on. No, no, no. I'm changing my answer because I'm, I, no, I'm changing my answer. I'm at 37. I'm going to say 39. Oh. <laughs> not a turn 40. I ain't, that boy, like, nah. two months or 40. <laughs> Shit, man. No, it's 50. He's 50. That's what it is. Okay, yeah. 50 yeah, cent. Holla at me. <laughs> <laughs> man, this shit's getting out of hand, man. Yeah. So, um, you know, acting is just uh, one of the one of the many things that you do. Obviously, oh, actually, before we exit this conversation, I wanted to ask you: um, Was that film that, that's on Amazon? Is that um, what you say it was again? What was the name? It's uh, Soul, Soul Hood. Soul Hood. Yeah, okay. Soul Hood. So um, right now we're working on Soul Hood Saga, but it's Soul Hood Prom. Which one was that? Which Saga would be? Saga is the newest one that's, that's premiering in the theaters. I think in May. It's the fourth one? Yeah, okay, the, fourth the fourth one. one. Okay, cool. It's, it's the sixth one, but it's the fourth main one. So there was two other tag-along films for uh, some of the, ma- the characters in the film that they had their own short films for. But this is the fourth main one. That's dope, man. And yeah. I, I, dude, if you you know, let me and Joey know. We'd love to pull up and go see it, man. Yeah, I mean, man. Um, I definitely, I, I let y'all know when the premiere is coming. Um, I just got a text right before we started about one of the other premieres on April 27th for Lot of Lies. That's like my first gangster movie I'm doing. Um, okay. 
I'm excited for that though because they the the directors um shout out shout out to Doctor Power and Adolfo they want they said it's gonna be the biggest street movie out of Jacksonville ever and That's Jacksonville dope. got some classic street movies so hopefully I'd love know, to um, I'd love to get you back on again after we watch it too and get yeah, a little man, review of the, dope, the new movie that'd I think be that'd be dope, cool bro. man um do you is that the, your favorite movie you've ever done with Soul Hood uh, like personally like like personal favorite for you which one has been your favorite. <sighs> Damn. Got so many. So I mean that's a great question, yo. Uh I don't know. I don't think I got a favorite because I, I like, you know what I mean? Like I'm a little big headed sometimes. So it's like I got big roles in a lot of movies. So whatever role I got a big role in, whatever movie I got a big role in, that's my favorite. Yeah. But I will say, um, I'm getting better as an actor. Um, and I think that uh now that I'm finding my space, you know what I'm saying? I think the newer ones I'm doing, like Ground Street, uh the policy that's on Tubi. Uh, and like this new soul hood, I just think that I'm getting better and growing. So like my best film, not even out yet, but they, they, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I like that. Yeah. You got more on the way. What, yeah. when you, when you say you're getting better, what do you mean? Like, do you have like a specific person and personality when you're acting or do you switch it up? I switch it up. Yeah. And that's what I like. Is I'm, there one you like more I'm, than I'm not me when I'm like, this is me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But when I'm acting, I actually you're do my research. Role. Yeah, you're you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I'm like, I just I just started acting class too. Like, and I never took one before. I'm literally on like 12 projects, 13 projects, or something like that. And I've never taken an acting class. I just studied YouTube, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I studied actors. Like, you're just born with it. I honestly, bro, like, it I sounds more so. like you're self taught. Like, you, yeah. you've done your own research and you kind of just have grown into, and you, it, it helps when you are naturally talented in that sense to where you are very confident and you do. Yeah. I mean, when we first met, I mean, we, we kicked it off and couldn't stop talking for like 30 minutes. Yeah. For the episode. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, you're a really engaging personality and you are a very likable personality just from like the outside. So yeah, like before man, me and you even met, love. it's like, yeah, exactly. Like I got tons of good vibes from you. And, um, I wanted to ask you, what would, what do you think is your, is your favorite role to play in a movie? Like, you know, I've obviously, I yep. think the comedy role now. I think. Okay. All right, so let me answer that. My favorite role I played, I wasn't even the biggest character in the movie, but the policy, and I basically play like a, a, like I play this connection for for these guys to the black web. But like I got like a sex doll, you know what I'm saying? Like ah. they, they come to my house and I'm in a pure robe, you know what I mean? Like y'all interrupted me type of vibe. So yeah. like I think that, and then the, the role I played in Grime Street, where it's a horror movie, but like. I was able to showcase my comedy and I actually was like allowed to script write. So like, you know, and that's why I mean, like I'm excited because I'm growing more comfortable with myself as an mm-hmm. actor. Like I'm not questioning it no more. Like I know I'm talented. Everybody believes in me. I've seen the most results of going to the premieres and people like laughing their ass off yeah. when I'm on camera or like just after the movies, like, Hey bro, you're a star. Like, I, I had good. to believe in myself because literally everybody, you know, we doubt ourselves at times. Yeah. You know so. what I mean? And like, but it's been so many people coming up to me and saying, like, hey, bro, you're a star. This is natural to you. Like, all right, y'all keep playing with me. Mm-hmm. I'm about to start believing it. Uh-huh. Yeah. But what I come from is, like, I, I choose to remain humble about it because you never know. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's not guaranteed. And I, I think I'm thankful. You know you what I mean? You can be humble and believe in yourself. Huh? Yeah, and that's what I'm learning. You know, I used to look at it, like, a, a two different ways. Like, oh, I, if I'm if I'm cocky, I can't really be humble. Mm-hmm. But it's like my confidence comes from a place where I put the work in. Oh, it's not cocky like, you if know. you back it up. If you if you, you heard just, if, you, if you straight from Joey's mouth, yes, sir. You, you heard you Joey know, said man. it. Y'all Joey said know. it. Play with me, <laughs> and and that's that's just a you know like I said that's just one branch of the tree for you, man. You're also a uh, very serious recording artist. Yeah, man. And um, I've listened to a couple of your tracks, man. You definitely got some talent in there too. Yeah, man. So tell me a little bit about that. What's um what what's going on with the music side? Of Broadway so Louis. Magic is out now. Uh, you can go g- look it up right now. You can go on Bandcamp, type in Broadway Louie and Magic. And then while you're at it, you might as well cop growth as well. Um, How do you spell Magic? M-A-G-I-C-K. You know what I'm saying? It just added a K at the end. I-C-K. What, what, what's, a, what's a K? I don't Why know. Why you spell it like that? Why I spell it like that? Yeah. Uh, the shorty that, that originally influenced the project, that's how she spelled it. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, and, and magic is like you know they got. You can take them off. If you need to take. You'll be. You'll still be able to okay. hear us. Yeah. Yeah. So magic <laughs> is like. Uh, I'm sorry. No, you good, good, man. It, uh, it, it's hot in here, boy. Yeah. So Conversations magic, get uh, heated. 
It's just a different way, you know what I'm saying? The spelling, it ain't no special meaning to me specifically. And, but yeah, it stands you know out what I'm on saying? the playlist. It stands out. I, I thought about changing this to just a C, but it's like, you know, why? Yeah. Magic is very like, you know, it's it's energy based. When normally when you see that magic spelled like that, it's because of the energy that comes with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So What yeah. kind of energy is that song? Is? Loving. Okay. Loving energy, you know what I'm saying? Um magical, uh uh rehabilitating, like magic is just I mean, when you think of magic, what you think about things that like can become possible that you never thought, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Manifestation, mm-hmm. like just great energy overall. And that's what the I think the the album, you know, portrays yeah yeah i like that man i think that um you definitely portray that as well i think like a very like uh it's like happy fun like easy going kind of vibe you know what i mean and i think that your your music reflects you really well yeah. um did so how old are your kids are your kids at an age where they're kind of watching your movies and they're kind of listening to your music and they're kind of <laughs> checking out what daddy's Yo, doing or my youngest uh lyric was like uh <laughs> i sent her so before the album came out I just was like, you know, curious on what she would say. So I sent it, or I played it on, while we was on FaceTime. And she was like, Daddy, whatever that is, don't play that again. No. <laughs> and I was like, dang. And I was like, but this is dope lyric. Like, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, that's how kids are. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And like. Brutally she, honest. Yeah, but and she. And that's not uh, what she listens to, probably. Nah, well, yeah, nah. She listens to like everything. You know, my daughter likes singing Adele Hello, and it's, yeah. it's, it's an old song. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. Um, I think that she's growing into it now. She's seen a video of me on a red carpet. And she was like, Daddy, what are you doing on the red carpet? And I'm like, well, I was starring in a movie. And she's like, why didn't you tell me you were a star? And I was like, I did tell you. You just <laughs> kind of ignored it. Yeah. But, you know, Daddy is a star. Daddy <laughs> is looked at as, like, as somebody, you know. So I think she's learning now. My oldest daughter, she's uh, she's been around me at certain stuff or whatever the case it is. And, you know, at some point she called me her favorite rapper. I don't know if I'm her favorite rapper anymore. But, yeah, man, my daughters know. Um, they, they aware, you know what I'm saying. I don't know if they watch any of your stuff yet. Um, I don't really tell them to because certain stuff like I don't, you know. I, I was about want, to ask you, or like some of the movies, maybe not really appropriate for yeah, younger. Yeah, I don't audiences. know if like I mean, I don't. I want to say all of them are aren't like appropriate, but I want to say uh, some of them that aren't really appropriate for for neither one of them to watch. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't tell them to watch it. You know right. what I'm saying? I would rather wait for them to get older. You know what I mean? I don't want to think that Daddy Wilding out here. Yeah. How long have you been making music? Has this been a kind of a newer venture for you, or is this something? I started taking it serious like 2016. Oh, word, okay. Yeah, like, I started taking it serious. Before, it was just like, uh, I'm freestyling, I'm very good at putting words together. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's the difference between being an artist and making music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I realized that I wanted to be an artist, and that's when I started taking it serious. So, I think around 2016, 2015, late 2015. Do you think it has a little bit of a... Like impact with your background trying to be a rapper as opposed to most people's background because you know a lot of rap sometimes I mean not obviously not all rap but yeah. most majority of the popular rap from nowadays is about the struggle and about the you know the the drugs or the any right. you know things like that and you right. are more of a guy where you you're a little bit more structured you had um, obviously you were very cultured as a kid growing up right and then you were very focused on sports and then you get into the navy and you still continue to play sports for a while well, I was broke during that whole time. A word, okay. Yeah, I mean, in the military, we had money, but money is subjective. You know what I mean? But I grew up with, you know, roaches in my cereal. I grew up with, you know, the pot on the floor because we got water dripping out the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? I Damn, grew up okay. with, yeah, no, I grew up, I grew up, like, it was hard. Um, I mean, when I moved to North Carolina, it was a little bit different, but it still wasn't, like, I never got what I wanted. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Facts. Like, I was the kid that, that had to look at everybody else, Um, you know, when the holidays came around and, Everybody else got this, this, and that third, and I got some like you know what I mean, like a toothbrush or something. You yeah. know what I mean? But I'm thankful. You know what I'm saying? My mother, my you mother did what she could, yeah. and my uncle, you know, he was raising me, his son, <laughs> his other son, and you know other people. So it was like, you know, I I had to learn that you know those things ain't what make you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I definitely grew up wanting more, and yeah. I think that's why you know. Um, I became an artist, you know what I'm saying? I want more, you know what I mean? I, mm-hmm. And I want to be who I'm supposed to be, not who y'all want to make me be. 100%, yeah. And and it definitely has had an impact on just like your character and probably you as a parent as well, you know, just the the going through that struggle, you know, you don't want it again. Type yeah, thing. you know what I'm saying? Like I never, I never, like that's one of my biggest inspirations uh, or, or biggest thought process. Like I never want to be homeless again. I never want to go through that feeling again. I'm not... Of of having to depend on people to help me, mm-hmm. or you know, not knowing where I'm gonna sleep at, you know what I'm saying? Like that literally still pushes me. Like I get nervous when I think about, you know, what I'm saying, hey, uh, 
all right, I ain't never being homeless again. Like, I'm never going to go back to that. And if I ever end up back to that, at that, I know how to handle it a lot better. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? for sure. So, yeah, because I remember when I was going through it and my uncle had to remind me, he's like, yo, you realize you've been through worse, right? Like, you've been through the, the worst, you know what I mean? I need you to remember what you've gone through so mm-hmm. that you can get through what you're going through right now. 100%. And the um, slogan for the podcast is hard times don't last, man. So it's just like, not permanent at all. Right. Not permanent at all. And it's one of those things where you just just keep pushing, bro. And then eventually yeah. you see the light and you're like, man, we made as it. As long dude. as you're not dead. I mean, what else? It's Truthfully, like, you know what I'm saying? I look at it like, you know what I mean? Like it, it teaches you who you are. You can mm-hmm. look in the mirror. You got to look in the mirror and figure out like, all right, you know what? This happened. This happened. This happened. But if I give up on myself right now, then what does that leave my kids? What does that leave the people who believe in me? What does that leave uh, everybody with as far as a memory of me? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I can't go out like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I need y'all to understand that you could be stronger about yourself. So in order for me to exude this energy that you see now, I still have my battles. You know what I'm saying? But it's everybody like, does, I don't bro. I don't allow them to fester no more. You know what I mean? Because they're temporary. You know what I mean? All you got to do is fight through it. And when you fight through it, that's when you're going to determine who, what kind of person you are. Have you ever had any bad experiences when it comes to making the movies? I know this is kind of a backtrack to, to the acting stage, but yeah. you... Um, yeah, for sure. Has there any, ever been any bad experiences? Because I can only imagine it's probably not all sunshine and rainbows making some of these movies. I would. It's the right. first movie I'm filming for the Soul Hood Saga where I'm not hurt. Really? What you mean yeah. Like, so, so my sister passed when I was filming the first one. Damn, I'm sorry. And, um, it's all good. Rest in peace. Um, but uh, that with that experience, that's when I had my breakdown. And I remember, like, I was uh, I punched a wall, like a concrete wall, and I broke my hand. And I yeah, had to yeah, cast you're breaking them. the wall. No, yeah, man. you know what I'm saying. And in another movie, uh, a shorty actually like uh, wouldn't let me get out the car, and I had to jump out of the car. She kind of kidnapped me. This Damn. is the first time I've ever said this publicly too. Cause I told everybody it was a car accident, but she basically like, um, you know, people, people have their own demons inside, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But with me going through what I went through mentally and the, and the things that I tried to do to myself, you know, I look at other people in certain moments and I, you know, I get PTSD or mm-hmm. I get anxiety yeah. and I was begging her to let me out of the car. She wouldn't let me out of the car. So I'm like, yo, if you don't let me out of the car, yo, I'm finna jump out. And cause I'm very like, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like you're not finna, the military yeah. taught me a lot, bro. So she ain't let me out. I jumped out of the car. I didn't realize, you know, I thought it was going slow enough for me to. Was she going know, fast? Flip back, broke my ankle. You know Damn. what I'm saying? I was in the, I was in the uh, hospital, and then uh, I was on my stomach for like nine weeks straight because the road rash from my back all the way down to like my butt was crazy. <sighs> Damn. Yeah, bro. Crazy. Yeah, bro. So it's like I, I'd have been through enough to know like I'm grateful. You know what I mean? And like you got to make better decisions on who you allow around you because you never know what kind of energy people got. This is why you got to just be nice. You never know what's going on. Yeah, bro. Be nice. Sure. Good karma is just as real as bad karma. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that. I think that's the reason I survived. And the reason why a lot of people still help me now is because I've done a lot of, in humbly speaking, you know what I'm saying? But I'm the type of person I literally get a shirt off my back. Or like if I got it and I don't, you know, if I could give it to you, I'm going to give it to you. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. care what kind of person you are. You could switch up and be whoever you're going to be. But my heart is my heart, and I had to realize that nobody can change my heart. You can't decide who I am. You can't make up a narrative about who I am. I know who I am. I know what kind of things I've done for people, and I know what kind of person I am to people. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know. I got I got a good question for you. What's uh? G- give me your top three goat movies. Pineapple Express. <laughs> um, That's a funny one. Uh. Pulp Fiction, although I go back and forth with Pulp Fiction sometimes because it's some crazy shit on Pulp Fiction. Uh, Friday, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, bro, you can't give me three because it's like I, a lot. I'm a big film guy, bro. So it's like it's a lot of movies that like yeah. are up there for me. You know what I mean? But for sure, Pineapple Express I just is seen, always uh, the first one. I don't know if you've ever seen club. this. I saw this a, like a couple weeks ago. Good Burger. Oh yeah, home man, of the that, good belt. Man, that shit. <laughs> Can I take your order? I'm gonna tell you right yeah. now, that shit is a legendary. Movie yeah, the Mondo me, Burger. They had the beef and everything. Yep. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, like, and I, I right now, like, I'm in this phase where I go back and watch a lot of the older stuff mm-hmm. just to see, like, because you know, we might have thought it was funny or cool growing up, but then it's like that shit was probably really trash. Cool. What's your yeah. favorite genre comedy? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Any what? specific comedy, like reality or like. I like to say this with with black people, we make comedy out of our real life, mm-hmm. and with white comedies, it's like it's just funny shit going on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like it's two different comedy fields, but 
I love comedy, period, bro. I just love laughing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, like right now, my favorite show to watch on HBO um, is a comedy show, and it's called uh, Southside, and it's based off Chicago. Mm-hmm. But it educates you at the same time. I like comedies that's based off of real life. I say that because you still get life lessons from me. Like The Office. You like The Office? Bruh. <laughs> The GOAT show. I that love No lie. Office. I watch The Office every... Anybody can tell you, bro. I watch The Office every night going to bed. Really? Like, I know, bro. I, Who's your favorite character? Ah. <laughs> ah. See, the thing is about The Office, they all play such a vital character. role, bro. Like, yeah, they you know all, what I'm saying? Because, like, I would say also, my favorite dynamic is Michael, Jim, and Dwight. Yes, that's, that's hilarious. That's my favorite dynamic because, yeah. like, you can never go wrong with it. But, like, one of my favorite episodes is the episode, like, um, where they play in the... Um, the warehouse versus the office basketball, basketball game, game yeah. and, and Michael is like, and Michael is like hype. He's like, Stanley, you got your bag. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and, and Michael was like, you know, you're, you, you know, you're the secret weapon. And then Stanley gets out there and dribbles in a circle. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> like Michael was looking like. And then Dwight ends up being one of the best players yeah. on the team. And then Phyllis is like, you should let me play. And then Phyllis ends up being cold too. Yeah, bro, I watch The Office all the time. Yeah. I, love, I love The Office. It Legit, I love The Office. It's funny how much shit um, uh, Michael's talking the, throughout that entire and game. Pure and trash. Pure trash. Pure, pure trash. <laughs> Didn't even hit the backboard. Pure it's trash. So that is the like, funniest He, he funniest was like, show. I was at the park, you know, and I, I hit a couple of shots, you know, some guys and some... African American guys, you know, <laughs> he's like he's just he's just dropping that in there like to show like this is the level of good I right. am, like you know what I mean. So yeah, like that that show has had it has some of the greatest writing ever mm-hmm. for so long. Like it's so many seasons of that. Um, the show that reminds me about uh, Office now though is Abbott Elementary. I'm not sure if y'all seen that, but y'all should watch Abbott Elementary. I man. seen this. Is it on Netflix? It's on um Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, Hulu. Okay. Yeah, it's it's hilarious, bro. They, it's based off this uh this uh school in Philly. You know what I mean? And I don't know if you ever seen the meme that went viral, like, oh, he got money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she's the writer of the show. No like, she's, she's grown to the point where, like, she's this amazing. That was in a movie theater, wasn't it? I don't know what the it was. Original? I, I don't even remember, but I just That's know that crazy. she's, like, turned like she's turned up now. You know, they went in Golden Gloves and stuff, and it's, like, it's amazing to see. I like I like the hustler stories, the underdogs. You yeah. know what I mean? And she's an underdog, and she's definitely winning right now. But, yeah, I love comedy, bro. I watch... All the comedies, bro. You like stand up comedy too? Like, like yeah, the, for sure. Who were some sure. of your favorite stand up comedians? Uh, Kevin Hart. Love Kevin um, Hart. He had me fucking dying. I went and seen Kevin. Um, I seen Kevin twice, I think, because I just saw him when he came to Jacksonville too. Um, He's a goat. Cat Williams, of course. Uh, the classics: Eddie Murphy, Raw, um, Delirious, um, Richard Chris Pryor, Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. He back and forth, but. Yeah. Chris Rock is definitely a goat. Martin, Jamie Foxx, Chris um, Rock got slapped. Uh, <laughs> boy, Bill Burr, slapped. dog. Bill Burr is like high key oh hilarious. Oh my god, bro. he's like, so he funny, slept bro. on. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, bro, I, I love comedy. If you gonna make me laugh, bro, I'm with it. Bro. Yeah, like I'm with it, dog. Yeah. Like, cause life is short, bro. Like, spin that shit laughing. Fuck, we talking about? Uh-huh. Amen. Wait, man. can I curse on here? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. Fuck, what we talking about? <laughs> Drop that shit, man. <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty sure we each dropped like ten f bombs when we were trying to guess your age. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Curse you know on what here. There's gonna be a lot of bleeping on that part. Comedians are the reason I think I became an actor. Cause like Martin Lawrence, Chris Tucker, all these guys, you know what I'm saying? Like I was watching their movies and I used to like imitate them, you know what I'm saying? And literally do their main and everything. Mm-hmm. And I just think naturally it just became my personality somewhat to where it's like, I just, I, that's how I am, yo. Like when I'm on set, yo, it doesn't even matter. Like for the horror movie, we literally screaming and, and it's that third. But as soon as the camera cuts, I'm cracking jokes and everybody yeah. not dying laughing yeah. and stuff, you know what I mean? So like that's, that's me on set. I'm Is it always jokes. good vibes on set? I try to make it the case. Yeah. I, I when I was at the acting class the other day, my director's uh girlfriend was actually there by surprise. And she told the teacher, she was like, When he's on set, it's a different energy. He makes mm-hmm. everybody feel comfortable. And you know, um, I, I don't know, man. It's just natural. I just like to make people feel good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like if you on set and you ain't never filmed before, you probably gonna be nervous. You thinking about not knowing your lines. Same way I was in basketball, man. I coach my teammates up. You know what I mean? I might take most of the shots, but you better shoot that mud when you open. Like, yeah. don't be second guessing yourself. I'm the same way when it comes to life. Like, would you call yourself a leader? Yeah, I yeah. would think so. You know, humbly speaking, I think I'm a leader. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't try to be the leader all the time. It just naturally kind of happens. Mm-hmm. I literally observe a room. And well, you have a lot of experience being in so many different fields, and like you said, you're very cultured. You kind of do know, like the you're very 
Like well rounded. Uh, yeah, a good middle ground for a yeah. lot of people, you know. And um, yeah. I think I think you I think you'd be a great leader. Let's do that same ranking for um for music. Oh, shit. So let's do let's do top three. Let's do top five because to, okay, because there's a lot of genres. I top don't know five how go, specific your genre. I was gonna do rappers. Okay. Yeah, you gotta top, do rap. Yeah, all right, we even with rappers. rappers. We, all right, so I'm gonna do this top five lyrical rappers. I'm going with Jay Z. Um, these are, and for our watchers, these are mine. Don't be in the comments. <laughs> yeah, man, some, oh, why did he name so and so? These are my. This is my list, personal list. Um, people that I directly feel like. You know what I mean? Um, Put your own in the comment. Yeah, Jay Z. Exactly, yeah. um, people don't like him, but Joe Joe Button is one of the greatest lyricists of all time in my mind. Yeah, he directly influenced like me putting emotion in and rapping about the depression and stuff in my music. Uh, who else? Oh man, this is crazy. Oh, I always judge people when they do their list, but I'm never prepared for people to ask me. Yeah. Um. All right. Um. Who else we got? Uh. Cole. Uh. Kendrick. Okay. Um, you put Cole over Kendrick. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would, would put Cole over. I was about to say, it goes I, back and forth, honestly. Because when Kendrick drop, I will probably be like Kendrick again. But yeah. Cole is so consistent, and then he's from North Carolina, so it's yeah. like a, I got a bias. You know what I mean? But I don't personally listen to J Cole a lot, but I do have so much respect for him because you listen to his freestyles and you listen to bro, him like the like man. He's, he's word you know, runs, runs, crazy. Yes, and then he comes from something. You know what I mean? He always raps about something. Yeah, yeah. so and he's a good um, person. Give us yeah, your you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's you got to root for that. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, damn. Last but not least, um, dang, bro, this is tough. It's so many artists, dog. Wayne, we just gonna go. Oh, Wayne. Okay. I was about to say, I was about to just say it for Wayne. you. I was like, yeah, the fact we, that he hasn't hit Wayne. this list yet is just hurting my heart. Because you so gotta much. remember, I'm from up north. I know, I know. So That's, like, my list is kind of yeah, up north yeah, yeah. biased a little bit. You know, you what don't mean? get that Louisiana culture over here, boy. But, we got we get a little bit leaking into Florida just from the side. You yeah, know? Wayne is definitely. a good I want to hear Joey's. Honestly, oh, that's tough, Joey. Yeah. Come on, top five rappers, man. Top five that I listen to. Yeah, Future. I, this is not in order. Yeah, Future, mine ain't in order neither. This is just off the dome. Future, Lil Wayne, definitely. Um, rappers only. Well, yeah, it's a rap. It's top five rappers. I mean, you could do fucking period at eh, period. Eh. Yeah, no, <laughs> we're not gonna be period. Back secured, period. <laughs> <laughs> I like Cole. I listen to Cole a lot. Um, I like I like you said Future though. That's, I love Future. Yeah. Old Future though. I like Old Future. Future is is I don't know, man. He hasn't Future's changed like very he, much. He, still he got has that. though. He has. Really? Yeah, I, he has. I think Future has become more comfortable with it himself, and it's like you can tell through the music. His last album was one of his best projects, bro. Like it's like very versatile, like. Future, you can't even call Future a trap rapper no more. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget he's a, he's when he dropped artist. to the, the back-to-back albums, like the <laughs> day after, like it was like one day and Bro, then 24 hours. That was the next time, one. dog. And those, both of those albums I could listen to on repeat, all like Bro. 28 of those songs or whatever Bro. it was, they were Fat ass albums, bro, and I could listen to both on repeat. I didn't have enough time in the day to listen to every single song. That was the issue. Who's it your was, favorite duo, rapper duo? Mine would probably be Drake and Future. I like I love Drake and Future. That's see, mine that's, is Yeah Yeah and Hove. Okay. Oh my god. Because Watch the Throne will forever be like Yo. There's not a group album that like I mean not like you know rapper groups like of course you got the locks and you got all these yeah. but like as far as like a rapper and a rapper joining together to make mm-hmm. a project like just Hove and, and Yay like to this day we'll never get another one and it's like bro can you I, Drake and Future just takes me back. No, I'm, just a good yeah time. no no what a time to be alive yeah. was a fucking that was a psh. look look I love. Both of those are undeniably the like are they're perfect pairs. Both yeah, of those, yeah. but I cannot put them above Drake and Wayne. Man, like yeah, growing up that was we ain't got no Drake and Wayne duo. album though, so they don't really count. Yeah, well, well but, but, but every album has got like five six songs with them together from Drake and Wayne, like you know, and they got uh, they have so many songs with them too. And there was a I think there was even didn't uh, Love Me have. Uh, Drake, Future, and Wayne on it. Yeah, was that mm-hmm. those three? Because yeah. then, I mean, shit, that's a yeah, that's a banger, bro. Back in the day yeah. when that song came out, that was a pretty like that shook the shook the game a little. Yeah, bit, Wayne man. and Wayne and Wayne and um and Drake for sure. I mean, but I also like Drake and, and Ross. Like when they get oh, together, yeah. like yeah. they they like magical man. Like I just love when I just <laughs> still want Drake to just <laughs> drop a, a rap album. <laughs> 
Like I just want a rap album from Drake. Like yeah. I don't want no R and B singles on no it. No soft shit. I just want you rapping like five AM in New York or whatever them drinks is called. Like yep. that Drake Western Road flows, like mm-hmm. yes. That Drake is uncomparable. Like like, you know what I mean? But I'm a lyricist at the end of the day. So like I'm always gonna go with if you rapping, I want you to rap rap. You yeah. know what I mean? But but Drake I mean Drake is also in my top five of artists though. Like yeah, I was gonna ask Drake how you is feel in my about top Drake. five of artists. Yeah. Like he's my top five of artists. Um He's right in the same place as like a Kanye, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they're like you, they're not too far apart, you know what I'm saying? Both of them use writers, but they use writers to the best. Like you never seen nobody doing on the level that they do it. Yeah, Kanye is like on a mass. He's mastermind. I don't know what he's got going on, but he's always Kanye is different, bro. Yes, he's different from the Business beginning to wise, now, bro. I would love to just spend the day with him and just learn like how how his mind works as far yeah, as bro. business and shit, bro. You but probably I, wouldn't learn anything. Like he probably wouldn't even like talk. To I him. mean, if I could just follow him on a day basis and just see like his business moves and shit. But uh, at the end of the day, bro, like I wouldn't be able to spend more than a week with that dude, bro. Like holy fuck, man, he's just so unpredictable. I feel yeah. so bad for anybody that's like. Did you watch the documentary on Netflix? Yeah. It was like a couple months ago they put it out. Yeah, yeah, genius. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that was. I didn't finish watching it. The funny thing is, I didn't finish watching it. But Ye is one of them guys, man. He's like he's so polarizing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But. He he has moments where he makes a lot of sense, and he has moments where it's like, bro, what are you doing? You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's like, excuse me, he ain't never done nothing personally to me. You know what I'm saying? So I always go with his art. Yeah. Like, Ye is one of the greatest artists of all time, mm-hmm. one of the most polarizing artists of all time, but also one of the greatest creators of all time. Like, you think about the things that have come from that man's head, music-wise, like, clothing-wise, yes. the influence that he had on the culture, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's undeniable. You know, I wish, you know, think I don't, I, I, I root for him. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping that at some point he's able to get his mental stability in check. You know I what I mean? I think he's just misunderstood. Very misunderstood, as mo- a lot of artists are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But think about this. How was Michael Jackson treated until he died? Facts. You know what I mean? Like, how are a lot of these artists treated until they die? Right. I would love I mean? to watch what happens. Like, when Kanye passes away, like... It's going know. to change. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because people... Yeah. They don't allow people to be human. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And especially now, you can't make mistakes. You can't have old mistakes either. You Not know what I mean? It's like a weird you. space where yeah. it's like, oh, you did something. And I, I won't say everything is excusable, but sometimes they be bringing up stuff from people past, and it's like, bro... You got to think about the climate of the world back then. Yeah. Like, you can't cancel everybody for something that happened 15 years ago. We don't, you weren't around for that climate where it was more acceptable. If that's the case, you need to cancel everybody. You think it it's a, weird that kind of happens to every, like, superstar? Like, some weird shit. Like that People like, get it. I think it's weird that people get a kick out of it. Yeah. Like, me, if I don't like it, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to look for it. I'm yeah. going to mute it from my timeline or whatever case it is. But it's like. People don't like something and they want to make sure that it's known that they don't like it mm-hmm. and they're going to go do all this extra work and put energy towards something that they don't like. Just to hurt somebody. Just to hurt somebody. You don't know how that person is behind closed doors. You don't know what that person got going on, but you out here trying to ruin somebody's career over mm-hmm. a tweet or whatever the case it is. So it's like, you know, it's a weird space we live in. I, I hope we grow out of that because it's kind of it's it's influencing the art by too much now. Comedians got to be careful with what they say. Which is dumb because you go to a comedy show and then the people get mad for getting picked on. Like, how do you go to a comedy show and get mad and then want to walk up to the stage? I forgot who it was, but I seen a lady want to walk up to the stage and try to take the mic away from the comedian and say her part. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, like you yeah. paid to come here. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? So <laughs> it's do like, they you know, realize that the whole audience thinks you look stupid as fuck. Like, you're fuck. not standing up for anybody. They bro. laughing you at you. Yeah. Right. And most of the time, these comedians got, a, they're recording their sets yeah. and they just post it on TikTok afterwards and they get, that person is just like, now you're going on. viral for being an idiot. Literally. Mm-hmm. And you're blowing up that person's career when you were trying to humiliate them. Yeah. Like, you look you know stupid what I'm as fuck. So, yeah. I got a good question for you, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I ask a lot of my artists this, or a lot of artists, a lot of my guests this. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, I feel like it's an interesting one. Do you feel successful? Uh, yeah. I used to not feel successful. It, was, it used to, it used to uh, contribute to my depression. Because I, I realized, like, with social media also, a lot of people are chasing other people's happiness. So, like, you go on social media, specifically me, I go, so, go on social media and I see these other artists who I know are more talented than, but they have more success than I have. Mm-hmm. Quote unquote You know what I'm saying But you know I had to look in the mirror Like why do I feel like this Am I envious of that person Or do, am I not working hard enough Like what It's really just timing And your success Isn't somebody else's success right. And 
my uncle, um, shout out to Uncle Keith. He's one of the people that helped me see it in myself because he was like, Nephew, you know, uh, I went on YouTube and I looked up your name and I counted up all the views from all the videos that you're in. You're almost at like 200,000 views, nephew. You know how big that is? And it's like, as an artist, you don't see a million. So yeah. you don't think you're successful because a million views and a million streams is the is the the the, the Mount Rushmore of stats. Right. But it's like, nah, bro, like it's, it's 200,000 people is a lot of people right. that I've reached. And then with the album release of Magic, like, we talk about this all the time. Like, when we see the sales, like, bro, like, I'm really thankful that people, like, really are. A guy paid $100 for the album. The album is only on Bandcamp for $15.99. People pay $100 for the album, $75 for the album, $50 for the album. They're not paying because, you know what I mean, that that's the price that they're being asked to pay. They're paying because they want it. And they believe in you. Right. You know what I mean? And. I, I used to think about Oh this person don't rock with me Oh this person don't want to interview me Oh blase blase And then I was like You know what This person do though mm-hmm. These people do I used to really be bothered Like we was talking about earlier About Jacksonville stats I'm like dang yeah. God, I've been living here for a while I Do all these shows here But Jacksonville like Fifth on my list I got probably more supporters in, in London and Africa than in Jacksonville. Amen, bro. I've got way more listeners outside of Florida, even outside of way more outside of Jacksonville than I do. You know in what I mean? Yeah. Like, like in 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 the, I I see it. You know what I mean? Like, I go on my Instagram. It's 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 people from overseas in my DMs. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what they think about the music. I go on Twitter. I got my homie. Shout out to Tabib. He's one of my biggest supporters. He told me, "Hey, bro, I just got back, but I'm finna give you a review of the album." He live in London. He loves sending me um videos of him and his beamer because he got one of the Fast and Furious beamers. Like That's he's sad. one of the guys that put a lot of money into the car, mm-hmm. and he sent me a video and like, yo, this this is my joint, bro. This is my dog, Broadway Louis from <laughs> from the states, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like like that's real love. You know yeah. what I mean? But I built that connection with people. Like I'm a real loving person. You know what I mean? So when people interact with me. Life is short, bro. And if I can interact with you and give and you, you want to make that good first impression, you're I can tell you you focus you're you probably make a good impact on that first impression, you know. Yeah, because it's important. You know you what I'm saying? Us, like, sure, like, yeah. like 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 I went in I when I was working in corporate, like at Comcast and different jobs like that, Bank of America, I would literally talk to people, bro, and like they would say, like, yo, you just changed my whole perspective for the day. Just That's by making them smile or just by making them just for that moment. You got one moment in somebody's day. As an artist to touch them I'm on set for 15 minutes Or I'm in a movie for X amount of time I got this much amount of time To make an impression on them And give them that feeling that They might not get from somewhere else Mm -hmm. I look forward to that now I used to run away from it You know what I mean Because I love people But sometimes I don't like people Mm -hmm. You know what I mean So you know that first impression It's important You know what I mean But being myself It's just That's who I am You know what I mean Like I love to put love out bro like, and I would say, you know, I mean, I would totally agree with you, man. Like, you know, you're 37 years old. You know, you're just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 39. Hey, hey. <laughs> 39 years old. Yeah, you're 38 years old. Man. In the you rap know, world, I'm only 25. I don't know he's, what y'all talking about. He's, uh, you know, in the rap world, 25. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's getting, he's, uh, you know, you've, you've had so many experiences. Yeah, you've man. experienced so much, and you've probably had such a, a big impression or such a big impact on some of these people's lives just to be yeah. able to watch your movies. Um, the people that have listened to your music. Um, uh, before we got out of here, I've got a little situational question for you. It's, yeah. a little, it's, a, it's one day to um, end the episode. I can't good, wait no, to come back, bro. That, I love this. I love this. I, I can't it, wait to watch a movie. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Dead ass, as soon as you leave here, we're going to turn on the Soul Hood, <laughs> man, and we're going to check that shit out. And we're gonna, and what, I'm excited to see the new one, too, man. But Yeah, what, bro. I'm a... The, yeah, bro. The you gotta new, hit us up. Boy. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure, for sure. I, I, y'all are in my in my circle now, so whenever I, I'm doing something, I make sure to reach out to y'all because yeah, I want to make sure that I expose y'all because you know we both got different fan bases. Hundred percent. So I make sure I expose y'all. We can to work my together. Side of things. Yeah, absolutely. But that's how this conversation. Grows. You know, I feel like we. I, I I always like showing support to the people that have been on the podcast and support it because obviously with you coming on here, obviously it's a collaboration. We're both mutually benefiting from this, but yeah. it's also. You know, you do believe in the platform that I have, yeah. and that always means so much to me. And yeah, I man. always want to do my this fair dope, share. Bro. Like I want to give y'all y'all flowers, bro, because it's not a lot of this here. Appreciate you know what that, I mean? Bro. It's a lot of names, and it's a lot of a lot of uh, uh, black tape in between where people they want you to pay five hundred dollars to be on a podcast. And I'm like, yo, like I understand it, get your money, but 
I don't work like that. You know right. what I mean? Like, like it's a benefit for both of us. You yep. know what I mean? Like, and, and don't get me wrong. Like, I understand people's value is the same. You know what I mean? I respect to get your money, but like, I'm more like an organic person because everything, organic, is, yeah. or, or, everything is in monetary value. You know what I mean? Because like, after this, bro, it's not the first experience. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? We're gonna if have you, many more after this. If mm-hmm. we if we had to pay for you to come in, or you had to pay to come on, it wouldn't be in. Uh, it wouldn't be as organic, and it wouldn't be like as we wouldn't owe each other anything. I yeah. owe you nothing. You owe me nothing. Neither yeah. of us pay. This is simply just like, I want to have a conversation with you because I want to have a conversation with yeah. you and I want to show my fans how cool of a person you are. Yeah. You want to show your fans a deeper side of you, you know, more connection. So it's just, honestly, like I said, it's mutually beneficial. Um, I want to ask this last question. Yeah. Ended on a good note, man. It's a situational question. All right. Okay. All right. So you walk into the bathroom to take a piss at the stall. Oh shit! The dude next to you pees on your foot. What are you oh, doing? Shit. It's just you two in there. The dude next on you is just deliberately pissing on your. It's late at night. Shoes. It's late at night too. Damn, you had a long man. day at work. Damn man, you playing with my heart. <laughs> Give him a minute, take your time. Because I'm, I'm still me at the end of the day. Right. It's like I, I, I still might smack this shit right. at you. Like he's looking at you. No, 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 no. He's like <laughs> maybe he doesn't even realize. Maybe he's just you know just just missing a if lot. If you don't realize, you know what I'm saying. He probably like you know inebriated and like you know what I'm saying. No, I'm, he's 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 sober. He's good, man. I'm not gonna hold you. I might mush the shit out yeah. of him. Like, yo, so what's up? Like, what, what you got going on? I asked so me, like, Joe. We were talking about this. I was like, bro, I'm beating the fuck out of him got, right there. I, I was like, I got shoes. I got clean ass shoes. Yeah, bro. you pissing my shoes, dog. Especially you retarded. If, like, if I'm out, bro. Like, if I'm like, if I'm really like out. And I got a nice like fit on, and I'm at the bar or something like, bro. bro and I gotta go I, home. I, I would be Dead. mad if I pissed on my own shoes. Yeah. So yeah, like no. <laughs> but you gonna beat your own ass? <laughs> I don't know, bro. I might get mad as hell on myself though. Like, no, nah, like what? How, why did it. you? How did you do that? Man, yeah, that's, nah. That's, it's gonna, it's gonna be. It's, yeah, that's a great way to wrap it up, man. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think, I think that, I think that tells us all we need to hear, man. And, um, man, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the OG yeah, Sessions podcast, man. man. Um, I know my audience is gonna love this one, man. I enjoyed this conversation tons. Obviously, shout out Joey for being here and uh, helping me run the questions, helping me, uh, you know, to run the show. Honestly, yes, sir. Uh, that's my man. fucking brother, man. Shout out Broadway Louie. Let's go ahead and plug these people in, man. So Instagram at Broadway Louie B R O A D W um, what is it? W a y l o u i e. Um, yeah, it's l o u i e. It's yeah. not. I think is it pop? Is do you ever get confused where it's l o u i s? That's my real name. Okay, word. Okay, yeah, bet. yeah, yeah. So, so Louis uh, the nickname. Yeah, Louis the nickname. Um, and it's kind of like you know, what I mean, yeah, it's because in Spanish, Louis is Louis. Yeah, yeah, you know word, I mean? word, so, word. So, um, yeah, um, at Broadway Louis everywhere. Um, on Are, Twitter, it's. Um, sorry, go ahead. I was no, going to say it for you. Yeah, yeah. On Twitter is uh, Broadway Louis, but uh, you, instead of the I, you put a number one because somebody stole my junk. <laughs> um, TikTok <laughs> Broadway Louis. Um, but make sure you follow me on all platforms. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of um, content. Um, I'm getting better at that now. Um, Any new movies? We got the we got the date for um, the brand new Soul Hood, right? So we got uh, Soul Hood date isn't out yet, but I hey man, y'all should come out to the cookout scene that we filming on April third. Can I be in the movie? Is it yeah, yeah, that's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, the scene, yeah, bro. Like, I fucking scene, love bro. to, bro. Yeah, 100%. bro. It's a cookout scene. You know what I mean, gonna be. Um, I think I don't know if it's gonna be performed. Just drop me the address, bro, and we're there, man. Seriously. Yeah, I got you, yeah, man. Um, I'd love to. A lot of so lies dope. is coming out uh, April 27th. The tickets go on sale on March 27th. Um, that'll be at AMC Regency. Uh, you can find um, where can they buy these tickets at? Just at AMC Regency at the, the um, theater. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, I update because um, it's it literally. I just got the flyer for it like right before we started. Word okay. Um, but yeah, um, just follow my Instagram, man. I try to keep everybody updated on there. Uh, on Twitter, I'm always on Twitter talking crazy. But uh, yeah, man, make sure y'all cop the album, bro. Like, please cop the album because streams don't pay shit. We need that money as independent artists. That's why he got the Patreon. You 100%. know what I'm saying? You got to make that money back. You know what I mean? And shout out to to the supporters on Patreon. Shout out to y'all that actually support the artists. Shout out to y'all for actually, you know, um, putting money into their brand and helping them grow. Because y'all don't understand how much that, not only like um, financially, but mentally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It helps you feel like it's a confirmation of sorts. Mm-hmm. So shout out to y'all, bro, for growing to the point where you have that type of fan base. Because it's Thank not you, easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the loyal super fans. 
it's a lot of work to get there. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that, if you got a hundred super vans versus a thousand people that that just come check on you every once in a while, it's a big difference. Right. One hundred percent, bro. So and shout out to y'all. Yeah, man. Thank you for that, man. And and when the people support the podcast, they're support they're supporting our guests as well. So yeah, man. That's you know, love. I think that's a big thing. Is like cop my of, album, man. Cop my album. Cop, a, cop, cop the, the album, album, man. The album, man. <laughs> Magic on Bandcamp. If you can't find that, just Google Broadway Louie and Magic. It's going to come up. And uh, is it where can they watch your movies, man? Where can these people so, see your uh, work? You can. Uh, so Soul Hood is on Amazon Prime right now. Um, he's actually remastering the other movies, so we can have a whole. The whole trilogy on there, so you can uh, watch it back to back to back. Mm-hmm. What um, about? Uh, did you say something about Tubi? Or you got some movies on Tubi or something? Yeah, the policy is on Tubi. That's the comedy where I play the perv. Word. Yeah, so <laughs> okay, definitely check that out on Tubi. Uh, the policy. Um, Grime Street is on Black Sea Media Network. Word. Um, a black owned um, film company here, uh, streaming service actually, but they got they got all the films like uh, big films, little films. They Hell got yeah, everything. man. Let's see. Um, and then uh, Life L Y F E. I play a college student. Um, at an HBCU, a football player, cocky, arrogant guy, hey. um, almost a villain. If you look at the comments on the episodes, they they killing me. But L Y F E. Um, and yeah, uh, new work is coming. Um, a lot of new work is coming. I'm I'm literally filming four movies right now. Uh, Badger portrayal. Uh, how I got twenty. Um, Soul Hood and Lot of Lies uh, just wrapped up on that. Um, and then June I start filming my next project, and I'm also doing a voiceover for this uh for this comic book in, in, in California. Oh, fire, cool. bro! Yeah, Good yeah, shit. yeah. I'm excited about that. So, so we yeah, got man, a lot of a, shit a lot on the way, growth. man. Yeah, y'all, y'all getting tons of content from my boy yeah, Broadway. Man, follow Louis. me, follow me, and stay up to date. Definitely, man. Definitely make sure you tap you about in. Fifty four, ain't you? Nope. Ah! <laughs> hey, we're going to settle this debate one day, man. Maybe tune into the next episode, part two of Broadway Louie, and we're going to really get this shit handled, man. Like I said, shout out Broadway Louie for coming Thank through, you, man. man. It's been Thank one you. of my favorite episodes. Um, Absolutely. Hopefully, we can run it again soon. Yeah, nah, for real, man. I love to come back. Y'all awesome. We out, man. Oh, oh, oh. It's the cook up. Tell the boys to look up. It's the jook. They ain't trying to trip on the boy. I got the book. Tell them, give me looks. I need all of that cash. All of that cash. <laughs> That's how you end the episode right there, baby. We out. <laughs>